Beanie's is pretty close. Go ahead. <laughs> but, uh, still, uh, still kind of the same pattern as before. It usually takes two to three notices before you, uh, a, a resident actions on it. Uh, one thing that uh, I am working with right now, uh, Dr. Bennett's office, that ditch in between his office and that, uh, I think it's Get to Go, I think is the name of it, a little gas station. Uh, of course, uh, it's overgrown quite a bit. I talked to him the other day and I was in there. And he thought the state took care of that. Uh, he said a few years ago, several years ago, the state cleaned it out. So I talked to Larry Craig uh, yesterday. Larry said no. He said it, Larry thought maybe the city used to do it. So anyway, I'm going to get with Jason just to make sure. I'm going to you know, run it all down but uh, before I get back with Dr. Keith on, on that ditch line. But uh, pretty much that's the only, there's a few you'll see in here that uh, the inoperable vehicles, there's cars sitting out on the side of the roads and stuff like that. Uh, there's a couple there. And then uh, the scrap metal at uh, Marty Shepard's Comfort Heating down here. Again, it's kind of a reoccurring Thing down there. Uh, when I did talk to him last, he was going to try to get with Nancy about putting a fence around that back lot back there. Uh, he still hasn't done that. So anyway, he might be coming in and seeing you guys again. I know he's been in before. But uh, pretty much, like I said, three three notices and then it gets taken care of. And then uh, we'll update this again this coming up week. But if you guys have any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer any of them. If not, this is what we've been doing for the month of August. Like these inoperable vehicles, once they've been sighted and have been fined, have they moved those vehicles or? They haven't been. They haven't been moved at all. They're uh, just paying a $25 parking fee is what they're <laughs> Well, if they come in and pay that $25 parking fee. The, the one that's really it's been up here is on Mulberry Street. All four tires are flat. It's sitting there. It's sitting off the road, but it's still right there on the side of the road. Uh, I did have a lady call me. Uh, she got the notice, but the lady that tried to call back sent her. She come in here to the city and sent me her name and number. Uh, I did call her back, but it was a totally different name than the owner, so I don't know if it's uh, that person's vehicle or whatever, but she's not answering my return calls, but uh, I'll try again. But, uh, yeah, it's, they haven't paid her fine what yet. What about if it sits in a backyard visible? Well, uh, right. can we do anything about that? I mean, we got a mattress and an old car sitting down there on the corner of uh, Render and Clay. Yeah, the one right down here at the red car. Yeah. Yeah, I've been watching that one too. Uh, uh, I did cite them for rubbish and stuff like that. I don't know, but they put a tarp up to try to hide some. Yes, I know. Yeah, uh, but I haven't checked that car yet because it's been moved before. And then they moved it in the backyard and stuff. But that is a kind of a corner lot, so I, I, I can I can check that. Double check that one to see. Um, our person who moved. Lives next door. Call me, Colleen. Okay. All right. <laughs> Not this week. It's been several weeks. Okay. But I, I go down there and talk to them. You won't do any good at that. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. No. You know that's what uh, a, a lot of neighbors. Uh, it's funny. You know, you, you kind of put a red door tag on one neighbor. You know, and then they kind of get mad at the next neighbor, and then they start calling. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I'll check it out. I'll definitely check it out. I think mm -hmm. the mattress is what the dead calling. Passes and they have yeah, it's, I think it's in behind that building. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it was sitting right there in the back of the building. It's pretty good shape. No, I don't think it is. Yeah, I don't think it's one of these. You go get it. Well, we was talking about that. Just look. Yeah, it's not going to be good. Any other questions for him? Yeah, we need to do something about Locust Street. That trailer sits back there. The, it's the one you talked to me yesterday about. Yeah. We've, mm -hmm. we've chatted. We, there's a process in order for us to do a whole lot. We have to do the abatement first, and we've right. got to, we have to have the final citation in the abatement. So. Yeah, the Dolphin. Well, that, that property has been on the abandoned property list, and the list that you gave me from 2019, and, and of course, I, I still sent it out this I'm sure this it year. is. Nobody's lived there for years. Right. We ran into a hiccup right when we were starting our uh, our abandoned 
uh, matters is when COVID happened and um, it kind of put a pause on any enforcement. We're just now getting to the point where they're letting us resume those. Yeah, I know there's there's several abandoned properties around town, and, I, and we kind of hit on that a little bit last month and stuff too. We've we've discussed it here. Really not last brought year, it up because I killed a snake this morning running out of there on the <laughs> So. Places to avoid Locust Street. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. But that's all I have. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate your work. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We'll take next. We have the minutes from our July 23rd meeting to consider. Uh, take a look at those. Have any questions, comments, additions, deletions? Second. Second over here. Any discussion? I mean, I, does Lisa want me to point out that she's got reimbursed seconds that are reimbursed on there? What? Don't you like it when I point out your typos? <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. She didn't give it to me this time to read. <laughs> All in favor of adopting those amendments, signify with up to hand. Motion's carried. Thank you. All right. Uh, Take a look at our financials. Um, do you have any questions at all about those or? I'll make a motion to accept the financials. All right. Is there a second? second. Okay. Any discussion regarding those? Okay, if not, then all in favor of accepting the financials as presented. Thank you. Motion's carried. No opposition. All right, we come to our old business. Uh, you have in your packet the reworded ordinance for the uh, alcohol uh, regulatory license. All thing that we've done there is changed from monthly to quarterly. And we've already discussed it, had the first reading. So if somebody give us a second reading on it, then we can vote on it. So somebody just feels courageous tonight. An ordinance amending uh, portions of ordinance 2020-02 to specify the alcohol regulatory license fees will be due on a quarterly basis. All right. Is there a motion to adopt this? Make a motion. Okay. Is there a second? I did. All right. Thank you, Pig. Yeah, I had three there. <laughs> yeah. Any discussion regarding the ordinance? It just cleans it up, makes it a little better for the those that are merchandising the alcohol. So makes it a little easier on our bookkeeper here too to not have to deal with it on a monthly basis. All right, all in favor of that ordinance. Thank you, motion's carried. All right. Uh, we have downtown lights listed here. Um, I bring this for your attention. The lamps downtown have been hit three times already, and we have to have somebody come in and straighten them up or replace globes or whatever. So. Have been hit three times. Uh, technically, we should not have a 12 foot lamp post on a busy street, a major thoroughfare. Trucks pull over 13 feet, six inch trucks, trailers, you get the picture. So, my recommendation is that we change out the 12 foot lamp post and put 16 foot lamp post in to raise them up out of the out of the traffic. Now, the new, well, the company that we get the lamp post from will sell us these cost of these lamp posts. The twelve footers cost about thirteen hundred dollars a piece. We can get the sixteen foot lamp post. They're willing to sell a sixteen foot lamp post. Just the post parts, all we're talking about, uh, for. $1,100. Mm -hmm. 
And what they're going to do is they're going to take our old 12 foot poles, post and sell them where they've got another installation for 12 foot post. Those 12 foot posts can be sold for a little less than what we paid for them as we still come out basically even. So what I'm presenting to you tonight is that I think that we're close to being able to swap out our 12 foot post with the 16 foot post and cost us very little money. And that way it'll stay up out of traffic and all. I don't know how it's gonna affect the downtown look or anything like that, but I don't think it's gonna affect it much. So my recommendation to you is that we contract uh, with the company to purchase 16 foot post, seven 16 foot post, and let them sell our old 12 foot post and apply that toward the purchase price of these others. I don't know exactly yet what that purchase price is gonna be, but uh, Barry thinks it's just, he thinks it may come out even. So I need to know that it's okay if, if there's a slight difference, that it's okay to pay for that out of occupational tax money, well, out of the EDC. The money from the EDC is where we're at been coming from. I think that's a good idea. You so I'd like to see the post, the 12 foot ones move to the other side of the street because it's up high and it wouldn't be a problem up there. Yeah. <laughs> engineer. I'd have to have an engineer take a look at it before I can present to you what that's going to cost because it's going to be I think the engineer I've talked to that did the, he says that's probably not very feasible to try to look at them on the other side. Um, it takes a lot of jackhammering of concrete and for some of those buildings there, I'm not sure the foundations can take a lot of jackhammering. And, but I can have the engineer take a look at it and see what he recommends. Okay, they just have to saw a notch to be able to get the conduit down in it. I'll have him look at it next time he's in town. In the crack, you can saw out oh. into each like hole, like this the other side. Here. We have to watch out though, because if you start doing too much work over there, then you would also obligate yourself to make sure everything is ADA compliant. Yeah. And not that it doesn't need to be, but that would be incredibly costly at this time. I don't know when they did that, but whoever, whoever, great idea at the state level to put in six feet of straight concrete there was probably not the best plan. I think we should go ahead and move with, with this idea while they're out on giving us as much money as they can. Okay. 12 inch. Is there a second? Second. All right. Any, any more discussion to that motion? Okay. If you're in favor of doing that uplifted hand, and motion's carried. And I'll talk to the engineer about that. We've got something we're going to put on up to Washington Street, aren't we? Or? Uh, just on the same side of the street that yeah. the others are on. We've got three more to put in there. And we're waiting on polls for that to see what we we're going to do with these downtown ones so they match. Well, if we change 16s, then these are going to be 16s too. Okay, appreciate that. Uh, now the floor will be open for new business. The first item of business there listed is uh, Western Kentucky Coalition. Um, some of the county judges in the western part of the state, and when I say the western part of the state, it's about from where we are all the way down to the Mississippi River, all those western counties. They've come together and they have formed a Western Kentucky coalition with the intent of being a political advocate for this area, for the Western Kentucky County's needs. This coalition would be a, uh, a political action Lobby block. Group. 
Hmm. A lobbying group. A lobbying group uh, taking concerns to the legislature, to the governor for our western Kentucky counties. And as uh, we have an opportunity to be a part of that, uh, not just as a county, but they're asking cities uh, if they want to participate and support this, it could, of course it will require some funds, lobbying efforts are not free. How much funds? $250 a month, is, um, a month, a year is what it will cost us. $250 a year and we'll be supporting this coalition uh, that helps. Are you going to be sitting on the coalition board or? Pardon? Do we have any say in anything about it or are we just oh I think I think uh, if we've got a concern I think that would be where we would go to get them but to would we go or would someone else go in our state they'd go in our state somebody that would make connections like at the legislative level or with the governor in other words hopefully by saying I come representing these western Kentucky counties they would have more impact than if it was George Chen saying I come representing the city of Hartford 2700 people you know uh, just looked it up mayor it looks like it's actually it was started by the uh, Penny Royal area development district and um, that includes like Hopkins County in those areas and they said that it sometimes seems like Western Kentucky is left out of funding decisions or legislative consideration they're what? that they're sometimes left out of funding decisions or legislative considerations up in Frankfurt and that they're wanting to start the coalition to help ensure things are staying safe and they would have a representative there with Kentucky, Western Kentucky's interests in mind. How many counties in the Bluegrass grad are going or in Green River grad are going in this? Well, it, it would include all seven of the Green River area district. I mean, it would, they probably, I, I would say probably, it looks like that they are going by the grad by the ADD areas is what it looks like like the Penny Royal uh, the the Green River uh, whatever other ones are available it's got um, the people listed as contacts are Brad Schneider who's the Ooh. Brad Schneider he's a judge for Henderson County uh, Judge Perry Newcomb he's in Crittenden County uh, Judge Kevin Neal is in Marshall County. Judge Jack Whitfield is in Hopkins County. So, you know, they're just trying to put this together right now. And um, I can read to you what all it says on here, you know, what the purpose is to provide a platform for which the westernmost counties of the Commonwealth can come together to share and promote a common and coordinated level of support on issues that affect our region at the local, state, and even federal levels. Um, uses collective efforts of its members to urge state and federal representatives to work together to further the common interest of our counties and communities of Western Kentucky. Uh, the coalition's a strong and resolute force for advocacy that assures the General Assembly and Congress understand and support Western Kentucky's needs and desires and that it's afforded the same economic and policy making opportunities as the other regions of the state. So, I mean, it's just up to you all whether you want to help participate and support this. Uh, you know, they'll speak for us as a city, they'll speak for a high county, they'll speak uh, for all of Western Kentucky. So. I just bring that to you and let you all decide what you want to do with it. Does it KLC represent us for issues? Well, and we yeah, they're more like on a, a statewide level uh, as far as I don't know if there are Western Kentucky concerns that are different from Central Kentucky or bluegrass region or you know there's some areas of our state that seem to get more than a lion's share of attention funds things like that i would bring up a few just for consideration like the kentucky wired project we are finally seeing a little bit of access and, and stuff happen over here but the majority of all the funding and all the work and everything went to the eastern part of the state um, it always has it, it always does 
That's Carl the point. Carl set that up very nicely many years ago. Well, that, that's, that's the point of this group. Same thing with like any time we have federal judgeships come up, you're almost always seeing judges come out of the eastern or the central district and rarely ever coming out of the western side. I think their goal here is just to kind of lobby and remind people that we're not the redheaded stepchild over here. And that we have a little bit of, you know, we have, we, we have some needs too. It was very interesting. It was a few, few years back, um, a group, and I think, Dustin, were you there too that what was saying to Eastern Kentucky? Um, Eastern Kentucky has sword. Right, but I'm talking about Sam Ford came down and uh, he had gotten a coalition of a couple different people and they took people from Western Kentucky to Eastern Kentucky and Eastern Kentucky to here and Eastern Kentucky came here and they're like, wow, y'all's resources are about as bad as ours are. And, the, and, and you know, and in fact, they have a lot more money and stuff over there because of the state, the, the statewide uh, assistance and federal assistance they've had. And, um, so I think that's some of the um, the balance issues that you're seeing that they're trying to kind of fix now is because Western Kentucky for so long has been somewhat ignored. Anything past, uh, the, you know, Danville and Frankfurt area, we just don't get much attention. You know, this is, this is going to function whether we join it or not. And, you know, we can get benefit of it, of their lobbying, and but do we feel comfortable doing that without having to pay for it you know that's my question would be um but like i said i leave it up to you all to decide whether to do it or not it's 250 a year do what 250 a year yeah a year or a month a year a year, a year. well that would be worth it see what it does for you. How many counties are included? <coughs> well, it's, uh... It said it included, in the one that, the article I said, said that it included all the western counties up to Todd, Ohio, Hancock, and that would be the line, kind of there. Well, I know, and how many counties is that? Well, I don't That's know, I don't have a map uh, It's probably... <laughs> You've had more years of geography than me. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably at least 30, at least more 30 counties. <laughs> Call me tomorrow and I'll tell you exactly how I'll go on count tonight on the map. Uh, what's the name of this group? Western Kentucky, West Kentucky Coalition. Have they already filed papers? I'm sure they have or they wouldn't be putting out a brochure or asking for money. And uh, I texted you a link to the article I found and it's got some information in there. Who? I, I, I just texted you a link to that so that you can see that. That'll help hopefully oh. answer your question. Twenty-five counties, roughly. Okay. I'll make a motion to go ahead with it. Okay. I'll second the motion. All right. Is there any dis more discussion regarding this? Is that for one year? Pardon? For one year. Is that for one year? Yeah. Okay. And we can drop out at any time if yeah. we see we're not doing nothing. Right. Yeah, that's not nothing. We do that. Every day doing now you might, Jerry. Now you'll <laughs> All right, I'm gonna call for the vote. All in favor of joining that coalition? Okay, motion's carried. Thank you. Uh, second thing is Fire Chief um, Chief Puckett has moved. He's resigned as chief, and the. Uh, Fire Department is recommending that we hire Tim Griffin, who was the assistant chief, uh, to be the new chief. And so I bring that recommendation from my, on my behalf to you that we hire Tim Griffin as the new fire chief. I'll make the motion. Okay. Is Do there a second? Do we meeting? Or has everybody met him but me? I guess. He, he's usually he down at the fire department. Mm -hmm. If you don't go meet him, he's, if you see the Finley truck down there, he's there. Down there, nobody even told me their name. Do what? Oh. Did I? <laughs> was you throwing a fit when you went in? No, I wasn't. I, was <laughs> I even cleaned up before I went down. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I second that. Okay. All right. We've got a motion and a second. George, how long has he been assistant? Do what now? How long has he been the assistant? Um, ever since Keith was yeah. chief, you know, he's been on the fire department. I don't know exactly how many years, but um, more than three or four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, more than three or four. Yeah, he's. Yeah. Uh, 
Griffin? He does most of our repair work, like the testing and things like that. Anyway, he works for Finley Fire Company, and they do a lot of our testing and uh, evaluating of our pressures and hoses and things like that. And so, I mean, he know he's the one that's oh, he's the one that's been ramrodding this uh, engine repair. Uh, and I'll talk to you about that in a minute. Um, but anyway, uh, I feel very confident in his ability to lead. Them. He's got a good rapport with everybody. And I had, um, had one other person approach me about the job, uh, Mike Nance. And... Uh, We'll vote for Ken Griffith, I do. Okay. <laughs> Ken Griffith or Griffith? Tim, Tim Griffin. Tim Griffin. All right. Okay. I'll take all, Ken Griffith. I will. I will. Yeah. <laughs> all, all, in favor, yeah, all in favor of Tim Griffin as our new fire chief. Thank you. Uh, to, That's our baseball card. After we get through with our business, I'll give you the information about these other items. I have... Um, You know, we put in our new uh, sewer line out here at Old Russell Court, and uh, they didn't use all the materials that they thought they were going to use, so there's a change order, and it will save us $1,163.04, and so I need uh, a motion to accept that change order in the reduction of $1163.04 to our bill. So I'll make a motion we accept the change order. <laughs> okay. I'll second. All right, thank you. All in favor? Okay, thank you. I ended up the uh, line cost us uh, $48,800, something like that, which it had been, you know, the contract was 50000 with the company. Which also brings us to another, uh, what we did not include in that was the engineering cost. Uh, water management engineered that project. And so we've got a bill from them for $6,500. So um, I'm asking for a motion to take $6,500 out of occupational tax to pay the engineering cost on the Earl Russell Court sewer project. Motion's made. Is there a second? I'll second. No, second. All right, now discussion regarding that motion. Okay, all in favor? Thank you. Motion's carried. Um, Hey, George, I do have a question relative to the bid process. Do what now? Our bid process, when those went for bid, was it clear, were, were the other people including the engineering costs or? Yeah, the engineering the engineering costs was separate. We, it was engineered and then they presented that to contractors and said, this is what the project is, you bid on it. And so, okay. so uh, Scott and Ritter bid 50000 if I remember right, it seemed like uh, Luttrell's bid seventy-five thousand, and there was another one that bid like fifty-six, fifty-eight thousand, something like that. So we went with Scott and Ritter's, and it ended up coming in under their bid. So that's what the change order was, but we've just not taken into account that the engineering had a bill to send us to. So. Um, Let's see, I'm trying to see what else I've got here. What about our pump down there that put in? Get up and run? The what now? Pump, sewer down. Yeah, I'm going to meet with Leon and try to get some kind of recommendation from him that we've, we've got a pump that had to go to the shop again. We've already authorized spending about 14000 I believe, wasn't it? was about 14000 for another pump, just a secondary pump. Um, I'm going to meet with him and try to bring some kind of recommendation at our next meeting to purchase another one. And but, I mean, it's up and running now, the sewer line. 
the meter. Oh, the meter. The meter. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the, no. the flow meter. The waste pump that we use to bring water out when the other pumps have problems at the power plant. Um, well, let me, let's get through business and not talk about the information, okay? Uh, the informational things. Um, one of the things that we did at our last meeting was we okayed paying payroll out of occupational tax to, you know, till we could get back on our feet again and repay. The problem with the way we stated it was that we said <laughs> payroll out of general fund for occupation, occupational tax to help. All of our employees don't work out of the general fund. Some of them work out of different funds. The police works out of general fund. The, the people in the office work out of general fund. Water plant people don't. And so the water employees work out of the water fund. So we, we're not covering their payroll. So what we need to do is make a motion that we pay payroll for any fund out of occupational tax until we get the not just general fund you know what I'm saying I'm, I'm saying a whole lot I'm not getting across to you the motion last time was to pay payroll out of gen, the general fund payroll out of occupational tax until we get the, you know on our feet I'll make a motion we pay the general fund payroll out of the it's not just general fund it needs to be all payroll, all payroll. out of occupational tax until till further need till the tax yeah you know, till the tax money comes in and we can replenish the occupational tax I'll say. okay second what we did was we limited ourselves and we couldn't pay water people out of right. out of the occupational tax payroll and we we're starting to hurt Okay, we're collecting bottle caps. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, as much has been made, sect, is there any discussion to it? Everybody understands what it is that I'm talking about. Okay, all in favor of doing that then? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, I like the authorization to spend the money that's in our municipal road aid and LGEA funds to pave three streets, re resurface three streets in Hartford, McMurtry, Gillespie, and West Center Street. Uh, that'll be a total of about $88,800, I think, somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, it's Gillespie, what else? Uh, it's it's uh, McMurtry. Uh, not Gillespie, Carlisle Road, and Carlisle, Carlisle and East, and West Center Street. So you're not doing Gillespie. McMurtry. I can't, I can't do it till after they finish the hospital. That's what I was gonna say. So they're not touching McMurtry though, are they? No. Okay. No, it's a six-inch line it's going across yeah. Gillespie. Gillespie. Yeah, I was gonna say I wouldn't recommend paving that. <laughs> I'd have to turn, turn around and turn back up again. Right. Carlisle. Yeah. Runs from 62 up to the no, hospital. No, it runs from 231 up to the hospital. Across 231, right? Okay. Yeah, it's been and it's been crossed and repaired a time or two. I know, but and then Gillespie runs right beside, and they're going to start major renovations and buildings. Next I'm not doing anything with Gillespie. That's not Gillespie. He no. said Gillespie, but he I said Gillespie, but I mean there's only three. It's McMurtry, which is in front of the rest home. Then Carlisle Road and West West Center Street, which is down oh, here. Center. Okay, forget West Center. Let's talk about McMurtry and Carlisle Road. Okay. With the hospital doing the expansion. Right. And building. Why are we paving, especially Carlisle, McMurtry? Maybe when we know we're going to have heavy trucks moving in and out of there constantly once it starts. I can wait. I can wait. It doesn't make any difference to me, but we're going to run out of. I'm just asking. I'm yeah, okay. I, I, can, I, I can substitute a few other streets if you'd like. I've got, I've got plenty of streets. <laughs> I've got, yeah, I've got, I can make one too. But 
we're going to run out of paving season this year, which is fine. We can wait till next year to do it, but I'm not sure how long this construction at the hospital is going to take, how many years they're going to be in this construction phase. They've not even started yet with, uh, they've got plans yet. They're supposed to, oh, yeah, they're supposed they're to start good. next spring. Next yeah. spring is when they're going to start. Yeah. Okay. So I can I can wait a year and put the money on other straights. That's well, no I mean, I just wonder what the feasibility of spending that kind of money, especially on Carlisle. Yeah. Because, I mean, you're either going to come in from the parkway and tear up Clay Street, which would be the states, and then it's either going to be McMurtry or Gillespie. Those, those are the streets for the hospital. That's one reason I was trying to address them, so that the, they're the streets that get a lot of traffic. I know. It. Okay. I understand that. And I don't have any problem at all in waiting until after the construction to do Carlisle Road. Well, you know, I've never done construction in my life. Right. But I also have seen the results of trucks going over it. And, does construction have to meet a certain rate limit, or is there any, I mean? No, they'll likely end up having to bring several cranes and heavy equipment in, yes. I can't understand a word you're saying. They will hmm. likely bring several cranes and other equipment in during the process. Yes, I know. I know. I'm not sure what those streets are rated for. They're not rated like the 231 or 69, you know, or even 1543. They're not rated for. Well, I'm, I'm not going to be opposed, but I'm just. No, I, 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 I mean, that's fine. That's what we're talking about. That's why we need to discuss uh, it. I don't have any problem at all with waiting until next year to do well, it. Can, can they wait that long? Or, well, now, you know, they're not going to be done with that construction by next fall. Um, no, it's going to take a year, year and a half. Or yeah, plus. it's going to take a long time. Can they not be responsible for the streets they tear them up? I don't know if they have to pay a bond or not. As far as I wouldn't, I don't know. That's for the attorney to come up with. It, I guess <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll, we'll investigate that know. issue. I would like to go ahead and do West Center Street, and there are some other streets, but I'm afraid they're over $30,000, and I'll have to bid them out. I don't think it'd be a problem because I don't believe I don't believe one of the paving companies would want to do just a move in here for just a $35,000 street. But anyway, um, I would like the okay to go ahead and spend the money to do. West Center Street, get it paved, and then uh, maybe next. Needs it bad. <coughs> McMurtry. Do what now? McMurtry needs it bad. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if they'll try to bring any equipment in off the Parkway, come in that way, or if they'll come on down and come up Carlisle Road. I don't know how they'll do it. Uh, Maybe the same consideration as as Carlisle Road. Some advice? <laughs> Emotion? <laughs> they could come up Clay Street and turn Do what on. now? They could come up Clay Street and turn on Gillespie. Yeah, right there. That, that turn is awful sharp for some of those trucks that are going to bring in with that big equipment on it. Well, it is on the other place, too. Well, they could swing over in the yard from the house across from it. And yeah, yeah, that guy would. They better not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they could use his ground place. Yeah. <laughs> he could add more gravel to his front yard so yeah. they could. <laughs> well, they wouldn't have as many turns there that way as it would yeah. coming up from two thousand. And it only affect one house right there in that turn. Okay. Oh. I can understand. I just like right now, just get an okay on West Center Street, okay? Can I, I just make, get that? I West Center Street. Uh, I second that. Okay. All in favor of West Center Street, thank you. Permission, thank you. All right. We'll just move we'll out our time on the others. The money's burned a hole in my pocket. That's what it was. Well, there's a lot of other streets, too. 
send it to payroll then. So, yeah. so George, <laughs> that, that being said, so next meeting, could we have maybe two or three options? Uh, I've got all kinds of options, and I can tell you what the prices are on those streets, you know, but uh, those are the some of the few streets that we could do under the $30,000. Some of the others like Walker Street or Smith Street or some of those are, they're longer and they're going to, they run into the $30,000, $35,000 range and that requires bidding. And so I can contact Scotty's and see if they're interested in even thinking about a bid if we put it up for bids. If not, then you know, we can get asphalt services to do all of them, which is probably what will happen. But I'll contact Scotty's and see if they would be even in thinking about it. For the Center Street? Or well, I can do Center Street with, without bidding it, because it's oh. only about $9,000 oh, to okay. do it. Oh, okay. Yeah. It really needs it. Yeah, it does. It really needs it. It does. Yeah, it is. And I, I, I've got uh, about a little over $125,000 in MRA funds and LGEA funds to spend. And my time for the paving season is getting shorter, you see. So if I don't do it this fall, then I gotta wait till next spring, which is fine, you know, I mean, We've gone with it this far. But the funds aren't going to go away. No, they're not. Oh, okay. In fact, they, we'll probably get some more to go along with it. They come periodically. It's money that comes down through the state, uh, through uh, Municipal Road and, and the LGEA are two different entities that ha provide funds. And so the LGEA is used primarily for, fun, for streets that have coal traffic on them, coal truck traffic. Yeah. But we've seen coal trucks on a lot of streets in Hartford. <laughs> we've got those golf carts right there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so golf carts, I saw one parked on Main Street, and that's not legal, is it? Okay. Next item of business I have is um, we just. <laughs> We took, uh, just took stock of vehicles, and we find that the water department has an excess number of vehicles that we need to get rid of. All right, there are three trucks that we can do without, and we need to do without, that are sitting unoccupied, unused, or undependable, all right? Uh, one of these is a, 2000 Chevy Silverado pickup, that's the one they usually drive when they're going out reading the meters. And it's got to where it's undependable. It's got uh, over 297,000 miles on it. And we actually don't need it anymore. What we've done is we took uh, one, the police department had a Tahoe. And we've taken that Tahoe and stripped it and now the water department is using it to do the meter reading. It's a four-wheel drive, and it's a lot more dependable. And so, anyway, that makes the, the 2000 uh, pickup unnecessary for us. And because it's undependable, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like to get rid of it as surplus property. Uh, another one is a 2004 Dodge pickup. This is the one that Jimmy used to drive, and uh, we don't have a need for it anymore. Uh, it was purchased as a service truck for the water department. It's only got 136,700 miles on it. Does it work? But it's unneeded and it's undependable for us at this point. In other words, it needs some mechanical work done to it. I mean, it still could be a serviceable truck for somebody. And the third truck is a 95 Chevrolet pickup truck with a utility bed on it. It's the one that they used to take to all of the water main repairs when they were repairing a water line. It kept all the equipment in the back end of it and all the tools in, the, in that box in the service utility bed. 
it's got a hundred over 193,000 miles on it. And what they're going to do is they're going to take the red pickup truck that we got, which has nothing more than a, the fuel tank in it. They're going to take the fuel tank out of it, put it on a on a, either a, a trailer or a, a pallet where they can just take a forklift and pick it up if we need to take it to service a, a pump. For the pumping out of the river. And we've got two toolboxes already that we can put on it and put all of our equipment in this red pickup. Now, it's an older truck, but it has fewer miles on it. And so it's in better shape than the other three. So I've got a 2000 pickup, almost 300,000 miles on it. I've got a 2004 Dodge pickup. 136,000 miles on it, and I got this utility truck, which was given to us by Kennergy. We didn't pay anything for it. That's how old it was. They used to give their vehicles that they were swapping out, they just give them away to municipalities, and so that's where this one came from. That's, that's a long time ago we've had it. So I'd like to declare those three trucks as surplus property and I, I've got some people that are interested in it that can't, I can't sell it to uh, because they're either an employee or an officer of the city. So I can't sell it to them outright. Uh, but those would have to, that would have to be by sealed bid. So I'm just asking to, to let me de declare those surplus properties and we'll just advertise them and receive sealed bids on all three trucks individually. Uh, I've already got an offer of $400 a piece for the three trucks, which is probably about what I thought they were worth. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. We'll find out how much they're worth. Uh, but I'd like to offer those for sealed bids approximately two weeks from next week's paper coming out. I'll make a motion we get sealed bids to sell three trucks. All right, sir, second? Second. All right, now you understand what, we're, what I'm doing. <laughs> you, talk, you talk about those three trucks. <laughs> Anybody have any questions or anything about it? Does any of them have red tags on them? <laughs> <laughs> no, they got yellow tags, no. <laughs> uh, they just got to where they're not dependable. The, the, the 2000s, driving around, it'd stop on them and have trouble getting it started again. It was just, it's, just spending money on it would be almost a waste when we had the extra Tahoe to use for them, so. All right, if there's no more discussion, if you're in favor of surplus property, those three trucks, thank you, I appreciate that. Okay, uh, now the informational part of it. You asked about the wastewater meter. Okay, it's installed, it's wired up. We set for 10 days because KU thought, had it down that we were requesting service at 415 West Union Street. We can't request service there. That's, that's the wastewater treatment plant's pump station there. So we had to, that's what we requested is 415, not knowing what the numbers were because the house on the other side is 437, the house over here is 417. The numbering doesn't make sense, but anyway. So Dwayne Taylor came in, said, did you request that? I said, yes, we requested service there. Gave him the number, he called. They said, oh, we had down as 415. We, and you want it at 4.13, so okay, we'll send a crew out. They sat there for 10 days knowing that this number was not right and let us sit there and wait until we called and said, what's the problem? So anyway, uh, they sent a crew in. It's, if you go down there and look at it, it's already got the installation, the meter's already set, so uh, 
I signed a paper today, the agreement that uh, we're assuming responsibility for everything there for the the pole, uh, everything we put in, we're assuming responsibility and, and the line for every problem. So, but that's where we stand on it. So it's ready. It's not, not running yet. Then. Huh? It's not running yet. Then. It's not. I say it's not. Well, see, we've got to wait for Jeff to come in now. Once I don't even know if they've got the service there yet. If KU's put service in yet, I don't know if they've got it yet. So um, then, once they get the service, Jeff has to come in and put in, you know, and calibrate all the measuring uh, instruments and everything. So we're close. You know, if it's not working. It would be working by the first September, should be. That's when we'll start measuring. Okay. Um, last fall, the highway department, well, the government had what they call discretionary funds that they made available to the cities. Uh, and the counties for road work, for street work. And we submitted, actually I submitted requests for funds for 12 of our streets, which ended up being something like $487,000 or something like that. I didn't expect to get that, you know, but I thought, well, I'll, just, I'll submit it. And maybe, you know, they'll pick which ones they want, but let us do. Uh, first on that list was Clay Street, and I wasn't really so crazy about us spending money on Clay Street when it's a state highway. Well, what happened was there was a change in administration. They got all new people coming in for the transportation cabinet. Uh, the COVID-19 virus hit. Uh, our, my application set up there and just got lost. And so uh, a couple of weeks ago, I called and I said, you know, I want to know what the status is on, on my application. You know, are there going to be funds come down or not? Well, uh, our, I'll call him representative of the transportation cabinet in this area, Doug Taylor, came by today and explained that uh, because of the virus, the funds have really been depleted or uh, had not come in because this money comes in off the motor fuel tax. And so what used to be a fund of like $25, $30 million that's divided out over 120 counties in all their cities is now down to about a $10 million, $12 million fund to go out over 120 counties in all their cities. So he said, looks like funds aren't going to be there. And I said, that's fine. But he said, but, and talking with uh, the chief engineer down here at Madisonville for the highway department, they've looked at Clay Street. They want to repave Clay Street from 62 up to Union Street. Uh, we're talking $100,000, $108,000 project, okay? They said, that's what we're going to go after. They want to do it. They want to know if we want it done. I said, yeah, well, shoot yes, I want it done. But what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to do a lot of extra work, like where there are several soft spots in the where Horsley put in the septic system or the sewer lines a couple of years ago, a few years ago. Well, whenever they filled it up, they just filled it up, rocked it, black topped over it, and they never did have time to settle. So it's, it's something down. There's several places like that on Clay Street, you'll notice. So anyway, what they're gonna do is they're gonna come in, take all that out, redo it, you know, build up a good solid base. But first of all, we've got to take care of the ditching on the side of the road. The ditching is, is our responsibility. It's not the highway department's responsibility. So uh, 
Jason is meeting with Larry Craig and he's going to find out what all the ditching needs to be done. And as soon as that's done, then I'll send a letter to the commissioner asking that the highway department be allowed to spend their money to do our street. So we will get we will get Clay Street resurfaced from from the stoplight all the way up to Union Street. You know that uh, bad place up there, the East Hartford. The what now? That ditch up there, the East Hartford. That bad. Place. Well, that's what where I first started meeting with Larry Craig about it. The problem is that there used to be vegetation on there that held the bank. Well, the people that own the property, they've round up that whole ditch. And of course, now it's starting to fill in. There's no vegetation to hold it. Well, the judge told me he was gonna fix that. Do what? The judge told me the county was gonna fix that. But they're going to address it somehow and try to, to get you know, a, more of a shoulder there because they're going to lose that. They're going to start to lose the road right. there. I mean, it's right up next to the roads oh, where, it's, no. where it's washing out. Yeah. So they are going to address it now. What he's as far as putting up a guardrail, I don't think you'll see a guardrail there. I think what you'll see is they'll try to bring out away from the road, you know, a foot or or two of just build it up right there where it's got some kind of a shoulder. Well, they talked about tiling that little place and maybe some rock on top of that. Well, I mean, that's that's for them to decide. That's their that's their project, that's their baby, you know, and uh, I don't know how they're going to handle it, but they, they've been out there to look at it, and I met with him the other day. Are they going to put sidewalks in? Do what now? Are they going to put sidewalks in? Where? Along the Clay road? Street. Along Clay Street? Yes. Yeah. I don't think so. Well. They're supposed to. There was a federal law that said if federal funds were spent, they had to provide walkways within city limits. They've never said anything about it. I mean, you got well, they're not going to take anything. You got people's yards coming right down to the street. You know. Yeah. Uh, no, nothing's ever been mentioned about putting in a side. Well, huh? Ask them. I will. I mean, <laughs> I'm serious. I will. I, I suppose. Well, sidewalks and people used them. We don't have any yeah. sidewalks anymore. Now you got to walk on the road. And yes, it's going to take some people's yards. And yes, yeah. they're going to raise cake about it. <laughs> Your yard. <Yeah>. Your yard. <laughs> My yard's fine. Okay. If they concrete it, those trucks coming in for the construction can use that concrete there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they spill it right there in your yard. When they okay, I got a, one other thing. Um, the one of the things that the COVID nineteen has done is it's made the state provide a lot more money and the federal government a lot more money to individuals and cities and counties. There was thirty million dollars that came through the state that Governor Bashir sent out to to cities and counties, and based on our based on our population number, we qualified for $197,000, a little over $197,000. Uh, there's a process that we had to go through. The Department of Local Government is handling all these funds. So we had to apply for that. We had to sign a memorandum of agreement. We had to submit some expenses that were COVID related. And so what we, what I've, we just got to come up with some way of justifying $197,000. And for us, one of the things that qualified was we could pay police salaries and benefits. And from the 1st of March to the end of the year, we would have spent more than $197,000 on that. So that's the avenue we're taking. Some people are paying for PPEs or uh, 
somebody's getting the carpet taken up and getting the hardwood floors or something like that in their, in their city hall, or they get a, a new uh, service window for the drive through or something like that. Uh, for us, it's just easy to justify. We can spend all that money on payroll, police payroll and benefits, which leaves more money in our general fund. So that's what's about done. Uh, we've submitted at the end of June, we submitted a request for a little over $63,000. We received notice that we've been okay, that we've been qualified, and that our check is supposedly on the way. So every two or three months, we'll submit, you know, more payments to be, you know, reimbursed for. And, until we use up the whole $197,000, which will be toward the end of the year. But what it'll do, this 63,000 will go into the general fund and help payroll and help build the general fund back up. This time of year, general fund gets very low because we're waiting for our, ink, for our taxes to come in. And, and the only thing we can depend on is uh, insurance premiums and uh, occupational tax. So occupational tax, I'm not sure how much has been hurt, but I'm sure that we're not getting what we normally get, you know, from occupational tax. And I don't know if anybody's cutting out their insurance that would hurt us there. But anyway, so that's where we stand there. Uh, we got 63,000 plus coming down to help us. That's all I got. So now then, do y'all have anything you want to bring up? How about a water tank of each deal? Uh, right now, the funds to, the, to dole out for these projects is just not there. Um, the engineer at the that's helping us with this. He's staying on top of it as far as I can tell. Uh, I haven't talked to him in probably a month, six weeks. And uh, it's just a matter of standing in line waiting for for the okay, you know, to get the project okayed and come in. And uh, that's where we stand right now. He's He's still Who's okay are we waiting on? Do what now? Who's okay? Well, the um, division of water would be one that would have to okay it. Uh, the funds would have to be okayed by... Uh, K.I. By who? K.I. K.I. Yeah, K.I. They're just different sources of funding, and right now the funding is being diverted to other places. You know, as far as money to do the project. Hey, George, what about the um, the food truck that is um, about what the, the food truck where they're serving food um, right there by the uh, bank? Into that? Where's that now? Between the bank and the uh, in on Kirk Street. Kirk Street. Yeah. Oh. What kind of food truck? It's, it's a little Salvadorian food. Cable. Oh, the RV. Yeah. yeah. I seen that. I was in. So they're oh. still doing food out there. Yeah. yeah. I saw it. It was over Beaver Dam. They moved over here now. Who is? I don't know who it is. I don't either. I think um, she works at Los Amigos. It's a little. Church or Mexican church thing in the lot there. Yeah, right there where the restaurant used oh, to be. Yeah, right. old Thompson. Dockers. Oh, no, I love. Uh, I send Leroy out there to check on them. My, yeah. I mean, as long as they have their license and they Yeah, they've got to have a business license yeah. and. Dockers. Yeah, they're from a little Mexican church. <laughs> Yeah. 
Uh, okay, anything else? I make a motion to adjourn. I think Dad's got something. Oh. Interior text me had, had a question, and then I, you all may have already discussed it, but I closed the rest of White Avenue. No, I haven't brought it up yet. Okay. So you all be aware, we have completed purchasing all the property on the back side of the hospital. Why not? Let me rephrase that. We should complete the purchasing tomorrow as soon as we get all the paperwork signed up. The, the uh, not, knock on wood. The uh, landowner has already signed the deed, so we're going to close on it tomorrow. So we'll own everything across White Avenue behind the hospital, everything down at Mercury. And we're closing on a lot on the corner of Gillespie and Clay. The city's already closed two thirds, three fourths of the street behind the White Avenue behind the hospital. We'd like to petition to close the remaining portion of it. We'll own on both sides. Uh, as most of you are aware, you saw on the news, you probably seen it in the paper, OC Monitor, I'm sure all of them are reporting that uh, we got our USDA loan. Uh, we probably will start construction probably in March or April. By the time we finish our architectural drawings, I don't think I don't think any of us have intention to pour concrete set steel in December and January. You just don't get a quality job. So it's probably going to be the spring when we start. So we'd like to petition the city to go ahead and close the main portion of White Avenue because what we're looking at is maybe take more of that grade off the White Avenue and pull it down. Any of you have ever looked at the hospital on the back side? The road sits here and the hospital sits down here. Yeah. And we'd like to, you know, from a topo standpoint, topography standpoint, we'd like to probably lower some of that down. You don't, you don't need it to get into that little parking lot on the side? It'll be long, it'll belong to us. We'll have the responsibility to put the paving in. Plus, I'm going to have to tear up part, I'm going to have to tear up part of the road anyway to do a connection between the hospital and the building. Plus, I'm going to have to re relocate our oxygen or liquid oxygen tank farm. We're going to back, you know, back feed that from the back lot. So, yeah, we will, but we'll probably go, we're going to end up doing a all new parking and everything like that. So it would just behoove us, I think, in the city too, that if we could get that closed and let us be responsible from, from all of that. Anything we put back in would be our property. Because as people would pull off White, uh, McMurkry and to pull into the new surgery center, let that be on our property. In case there's any problem or upkeep, that's our responsibility, not the city's responsibility. I mentioned something to him. That there would be some costs, obviously, in preparing the ordinance and having it published and advertised. And he said the hospital would. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll pay for that. So I would like to say, if you all already closed two thirds or three fourths of it down to where uh, Bonnie and Tony Carey own, but we're closing on it tomorrow. Okay. They got this sale. They were the old up, wasn't they? Let me ask you a good question. I got about the whole block. We way. had quite a discussion about that already about the hospital, which is great. It's wonderful for this county and this city. The roads of Carlisle, McMurtry, Gillespie uh, will be used probably for hauling materials, equipment. Other, other large objects. Are you all planning to take responsibility for repaving those roads? Well, you were on the council at the time. When I was on the council several years ago, we talked about resurfacing Gillespie, and I asked the city not to resurface it until after the patch it. One of the reasons why I asked the patch it was we're not 100% sure that the sewer and the water on Gillespie is going to be stout enough to carry what the hospital needs to do on surgical. So we, could, we, what I was wanting to work with the contractors was is to bring most everything on Gillespie side. So if we're doing any damage, let the Gillespie road be the one tore up because I'm willing to bet that we're going to have to enter. Do you remember this conversation, Jerry? Yeah. 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 We're probably going to have to have Gillespie look at the water and sewer. So if that's the case, uh, we're, we're going to have to look at that. I, mean, I can't speak on the hospital's behalf for that, but I have brought it up on more than one occasion that. I do feel like the last is going to have some damage done to it, and we're the one causing the damage. I think it's only fair to, that I take it back to the hospital and say, hey, if we're responsible for the damage, are we going to be responsible for the repair of it? I can't speak on their behalf, but I will address that subject. Well, but I think also, you know as well as I do, that not all trucks are going to use the same ramp. That is true, but we have, okay. the, we have an advantage. Remember now, we own all around with Mercury and all the way down White. We can make it, and we can make it part of the consideration of anybody doing business with it. Anybody? You own the road? No, what I'm saying, I own up, we own up there to McMurtry all the way down. We can put signage and everything up there on our properties, directing everybody, and anybody who's a contractor, anybody who subs from it, we can make sure they're all properly educated how to come in and go out of our, uh, uh, to have access. Does that make sense? 
I mean, signage, don't get me wrong, and if they so violate it, are they going to bring anything in on Carlisle for construction or anything? I can't say that, but, but when we get ready to do the contractors, we will have to ask them. Or they, they all have to be bonded, so any damage they do, any, anything like that that happens, they will should be responsible for that. I mean, I can't speak for Well, I would, I would like for you all to do that. Yeah, we will, we will address all the subject. Right. I mean, I mean, I think I would, with any of us would be remiss to say, you know, if any of us, person, as an individual or as a company or as a hospital or any entity, if you do damage, you have responsibility seats to be taken care of. Right. I can't make that commitment, right. but I sure will be glad to address it. Yeah. I think we would be remiss if we don't address that subject. But my point was, is that since we own that property on the corner, we can have, have signage, and then part of the spec sheets will be is any contractor who does damage to our property or any, I can't ever get to work about right, egresses, and Ingress. would be responsible for that damage that they did. Because remember, anybody that subs, anybody that bids it's going to have to make sure their property bonded. And you all have that entire block, man. No, we have probably 75% of the block. Okay. We own all the way down McMurtry. We own all the way around White. We own all the way up Gillespie, except where Catherine George lived and uh, where uh, uh, the house on the corner where Noble and Marty, Noble Chen and Marty Shepherd bought that little white house, but we bought the back half of it. And there are two little white houses, two not white houses, one yellow yeah, uh, sits back, you, you almost miss them when you drive down the road. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. Yeah. Those, are, those two we haven't bought. But you do have Bonnie Gary in that next house. We got we bought where uh, Lois Porter lived, yeah. Michelle Abner, Bonnie and Tony Gary, where the Titchener house was, where all the preacher all, all that property there, we bought all it. Yeah. And then we bought the back half of that other one. And uh -huh. I hope we're about buying for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I hate to see the Sears house go. Huh? I hate to see that one house go. Which one's that? The one Sears and Robo. Which Craftsman. One? Which one's that? The one that sits back behind, well, it was by Lois. That's Claudia's that's sister's back. house, I think. I mean, we haven't purchased that one. Oh, yeah? Those, that's one of the two we haven't purchased. But I can tell you, as of as we speak, the three houses we just purchased, at this stage of the game, we do not have intentions to track with that. One of them we moved and we relocated education into it. The other house we may end up having a position that comes in here internally to stay in. And the other one, let's be honest, I've got to move people out of the hospital. Social distancing. We've got people sitting on top of people. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're in a different climate today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so please, please understand that I will address the subject. I do not want to. As a taxpayer, I don't want to do taxes, no, paying to repair the street that you brought up, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just go ahead and prepare and we can discuss it at the next time. Well, it's just that we're we'll yep. talking about either doing it so. if they're not in favor of doing it. Yeah, well, please, I do think this is approval. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. 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 I make a motion that we close the rest of White Avenue. Okay. From the back end of the hospital to McMurtry. So we should just proceed with preparing, right? Like we gotta let we gotta let that happen with the purchase tomorrow and Tara can prepare the paperwork to close it. I think we're in agreement, right? Yeah. We move forward with it? We'll have to do it by ordinance. Yeah. 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 Can't happen tonight. So. If you're in favor of closing it. Okay, thank you. Thank y'all. Okay. Make your motion. Uh, I promise I'll address that. Okay. Make your motion again. Uh, you'll have we got a motion. We got a motion. We got another motion on the floor that I accept now. Uh, didn't Wait. accept it a while ago. Make motion adjourn. Okay. Second. second. All, all in all favor. All. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. All in favor. Motion carries. <laughs> Thank you. Who seconded that? You all have a blessed evening. Thank you for your.